Welcome everyone to German Tool Reviews. Today we have a showdown of 7 inch combination pliers from three different German tool brands. Combination pliers get their name from the fact that they can perform two functions, cutting and gripping. Combination pliers are usually characterized with a blunt flat nose, serrated gripping jaws, and a hardened blade for cutting wires. The difference from this style and Lyman pliers is that Lyman pliers will also have additional gripping surfaces below the joint. For this showdown, we are looking at combination pliers from Ghidorah, Knipex, and NWS. The Knipex and NWS models are made in Germany and the Ghidorah unit is made in Austria. While the Ghidorah and the Knipex pliers are 200 millimeters in length, the NWS pliers are 180 millimeters. NWS does offer a 205 millimeter version, but I do not anticipate much of a difference from the 180 millimeter version. All of the pliers conform to the DIN ISO 5746 standard. Now let's take a quick look at each of the candidates before diving into the showdown. The Ghidorah 8250-200JC pliers come from their Power Pliers 3-piece set S8393 that I picked up some time ago. As you can see here, the package got a bit beat up because Ace Ventura is often my USPS mailman. I often get packages in various states of decomposition from USPS. I think it's more related to their processing facilities than the actual deliverer, but I digress. It just so happens that I have an older version of the same model and there are some differences. The driving force behind the change was the updated Ghidorah logo. The biggest change is in the handle design. The new design eliminates the nubs at the start of the handle and adds a flat surface with bumps for additional rotation leverage. I definitely like the new design better and would agree with their decision to change the design. The other change is to the laser engraving on the actual pliers. The logo has been updated as well as the addition of two arrows near the cutting blades to indicate the position where the most leverage would be transferred. The word Austria has also been replaced with made in Austria. The castings and finish look exactly the same in both versions. Taking a look at the catalog extract, we see that the model is offered in several lengths as well as two different styles. The style I have here is the JC style, which adds chrome plating and the two component handles seen here. Ghidorah also offers the TL style, which uses dipped handles and omits the chrome plating. The TL style is a bit cheaper for those on a budget. One thing to note here from the catalog is the 62 to 64 HRC inductively hardened cutting edges, which is definitely up on the higher end for most pliers. Now on to the Knipex with part number 0201200. These are from the high leverage combination pliers line. As with most Knipex products, there are several options for finish, length, and handle types. In this case, I opted for the black finish with standard plastic coated handles. You can also get this with the two component handles and with the chrome finish. From the catalog, these have an advertised hardness of 63 HRC, which is very much in line with the Ghidorah set. I do like how Knipex puts a liberal amount of oil on their products to prevent any corrosion, since these could have been sitting in a warehouse or a boat for months. And I ordered these especially for this showdown. Now for the NWS with part number, 109-69-180. These pliers were part of the 775 series set that also included side cutters and needle nose pliers. It took several months to get these after I ordered them so hopefully it was worth the wait. These contain the titanium finish along with their soft grip handles. I wonder who at NWS decided to give this finish number 69. The catalog indicates that this particular finish is PTFE or Teflon coated. The cutting edges are described as induction hardened but does not indicate the actual HRC value. To evaluate the pliers, I created a set of parameters that are important to me and assigned a weight to each such that the total came out to 100%. The following are the categories that I used to rate each of the candidates. Cutting performance at 35%. Since I usually use these mostly for cutting wire, I weight the performance of the cutting edges as the highest. Gripping performance at 20%, which is how well do the pliers grip onto fasteners. Grips and handle design at 15%, how comfortable are the grips and the general design of the handles. Cost at 15%, the lower the better of course. Joint design at 10%, how well the joints design and how smoothly do they operate. And finally, build quality and production at 5%. Are there any manufacturing defects or production issues? To score each candidate, I'm going to change it up since the last showdown and actually assign a value between 1 and 10 for each category for each candidate instead of scoring it as a relative placement. Now it's time for the showdown. We will start with the category with the least weighted score and then progress up to the most weighted. First up, we have build and production quality. All three of the candidates were built very well. Out of the box, the one that had the best impression was the Knipex. Right away, the unit could be used and didn't require any oiling of the joints. There were no nicks in the plastic handles or scratches on the machine surfaces. The Ghidorah unit had an issue with the lubrication that they used for the joints. On both versions of this model I own, it appears that the joint grease has hardened. I did have to oil up this joint to start and loosen up some of this grease up. As a result, it will be leaking for quite a while as that old grease loosens up. Ghidorah should probably look at the long-term stability of the joint lubrication they are using. Other than that, I didn't see any build issues. The joints on the NWS pliers were extremely stiff and may have also have an issue with joint lubrication drying out. I did have to oil these as well. 
Even after oiling, they were still stiff when fully open, so additional joint adjustment may be necessary in the future. So to score this category, I gave the Ghidorah an 8, the Kinepex 10, and the NWS 7. Now onto joint design. As previously mentioned, the NWS pliers had an issue with overly stiff joints. It does appear that there is a torque screw that can be adjusted. However, I found that these are typically secured with permanent thread locker, and once you take it out, you really need to clean out the existing thread locker before attaching it, so I declined to make any adjustments at this time. The Knipex and Ghidorah almost had the exact same reverse axis joint design. However, when comparing the joints directly, it was very noticeable that the Ghidorah had a subtle wobble. There was no such wobble in the Knipex pliers. I suppose since Knipex has been making pliers so long, they have perfected the manufacturing process to get this tolerance very tight before the final assembly. So to score this, I gave the Ghidorah a 7, the Knipex a 10, and the NWS a 6. Now to grip and handle design. After holding each of the pliers, it was pretty evident that the most comfortable by far was the NWS. The strategic placement of the softer surfaces makes the NWS handles feel very natural. They are so good that I'm actually surprised that NWS hasn't tried to license th this design to other plier companies or sell the handles separately. Another thing to note on the NWS pliers is the small loops at the end of the handles, which are there to accept a safety clip or spring return lever, which I didn't get. As for the Kinepex pliers, it is harder to quantify since they offer so many styles. I chose the plastic dip pliers because I find that they are the easiest to clean. I do have several other multi component handles, which in fact are more comfortable than the plastic coated, but are not nearly as comfortable as the NWS. I think the handles I like the least out of these three is the Ghidorah. While the new design was definitely an improvement over the old, it wasn't quite up to the level of the other two in my opinion, and felt overly bulky. So to score this, I gave the Ghidorah a 7, the Knipex an 8, and the NWS a 10. Now for cost. Based on the current MSRP of each unit, the lowest priced unit is the NWS at $29.99, followed by the Knipex at $34.74, and the Ghidorah at $57.94. It is surprising to see the Ghidorah cost nearly twice as much as the other two, considering they have very similar specs. So to score this, I gave the Ghidorah a 6, the Knipex a 9, and the NWS a 10. Now on to gripping performance. One of the jobs of combination pliers is as a general gripper, whether that be a piece of material or a fastener. This is done in one of two ways, either through the small serrated edges at the tip or the larger serrated edges just below the tip. One thing to note is that the NWS pliers also have one additional gripping surface with serrated edges on the opposite side of the cutting edges that can be used as sort of a socket to grip larger hexagonal fasteners. The Ghidorah and Knipex have just a rounded surface in this place. Another interesting caveat about the NWS is the larger serrated gripping surfaces are not symmetrical. There is a slight curve and one extra tooth on one side as opposed to the other. I'm not sure if this is an advantage to the others, but it's something I haven't seen before. The first test I performed is the serrated surface with larger teeth. Using a quarter inch bolt held in the jaws, I used a pair of Knipex Raptors on the nut and checked to see how much relative force it would take for the bolt to slip. The best performing unit was the Knipex. It definitely took more force to slip the bolt. The next best was the NWS followed by the Ghidorah. I think part of the problem with the Ghidorah is that the chrome surface is a lot more slippery than the other two pliers. I did a similar test with the smaller serrated blade edges. Again, I felt the Knipex performed the best out of these three. The second best this time was the Ghidorah, and third was the NWS. The issue with the NWS is that the small teeth start much further down the pliers, and therefore you won't get a good grip on small fasteners in the orientation that I was testing them in. Now for the most important category, cutting performance. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the advertised cutting capacities for each unit. The only manufacturer who lists the full set of capacities is Knipex. NWS does not advertise the piano wire capacity, and Ghidorah does not advertise the hard wire or multi-conductor cable capacity. However, from the information provided, one could infer that Knipex has the highest capacity out of all three. I've selected a little sampling of several different wire types from my stash of military-grade cabling. Granted that most people will never use this type of wire, it is considered hard on tools because a lot of it is silver coated. Silver coated wire is significantly harder than the more typical tin coated wire. We'll start at a relatively modest cable size and then step it up from there. First up is some 16 American wire gauge silver plated wire with Teflon insulation. I tried to cut about the same spot for each test. One thing I noticed about the NWS pliers right away is that it tends to eject the wire at high velocity and will fly across the room. The Ghidorah pliers appear to hold on to the insulation after cutting and does not call the pieces to fly off. Next up we have some coaxial cable M17194-RG179. 
This has a silver covered copper clad steel 30 American wire gauge conductor with a PTFE dielectric, a silver covered copper shield and a fluorinated ethylene propylene jacket. This is expensive stuff at over $3 per linear foot. I often get this stuff because it's being thrown away because they can't do anything with these short lengths since they use it to make very long coaxial cables. Next is some Cat5 cable with stranded wire and a PVC jacket. Here we have some three conductors, 16 American wire gauge shielded cable with a wrapped PTFE jacket. This is the point where I noticed that the Teflon coated wire would slip on the Ghidorah pliers. I didn't have this issue on the Knipex or NWS units. Next is some 10 American wire gauge silver plated wire with Teflon insulation. Now this is just about at the capacity of all three units. Again, we saw some major slippage on the Ghidorah unit. So how about some high voltage cable? Here is some cable rated for 40,000 volts. The tricky thing about this is the insulation can be very hard to cut because it's so rubbery. But this is pretty low gauge stuff at about 20 American wire gauge. Now it's time to step it up to some extreme wire. Here we have some 6 American wire gauge silver plated wire with Teflon insulation. I definitely needed to use two hands to cut this wire. But then again this is already well past the rated capacities of all these units. Surprisingly it felt like the NWS was cutting the best out of all of them on this high capacity wire. Now here is some 6 gauge wire with a different type of insulation, in this case EPDM. This is a little bit more flexible version of a 6 8 gauge wire. It contains a quantity of 84 or 25 American wire gauge strands of tin plated copper. The NWS pliers needed a two step operation to get through the wire. The Ghidorah pliers really had a hard time making it through this cable. The Knipex also struggled but not as bad as the Ghidorah. Now let's really take it to the extreme with some of this one out American wire gauge welding wire. This contains many very small gauge wires in order to make it more flexible. Normally you would use a ratcheting cable cutter to get through wires this size. It also has an EPDM rubber insulation. With the NWS pliers I could get through about a quarter of the copper before I gave up. The Ghidorah, I believe, did the worst and just barely made it through the insulation. The Knipex didn't fare much better, but it did get through more than the Ghidorah did. I was actually quite surprised at how well the NWS held up against this heavy gauge wire, especially considering that it is a smaller model than the other two units. Before scoring this category, let's take a look at the damage done going through all these cables. Both the NWS and Knipex started to see the finish rub off, much more so on the NWS. I was surprised to see that the Ghidorah didn't have any marks even after going through all this cable. The chrome coating on the Ghidorah unit must be a much more durable finish than the other two units. It was clear that all of the units performed beautifully on the wire cutting test. I'm going to give both the Knipex and NWS a 10 because they performed well cutting cable well beyond its design capabilities. I'm going to take a point off on the Ghidorah and give it a 9 because of the constant slippage I was seeing when cutting Teflon coated wire, but it still did the job well. Now let's tally up the scores and see who the winner was. The perfect score would be 10. In third place with a score of 7.8 is the Ghidorah. The issues I had with the Ghidorah are the higher cost, dry joint grease, and slippery cutting surface. 
the Ghidorah did look to, to sustain the least amount of surface damage after going through all the tests. In second place with a score of 9.05 is the NWS. The biggest issues with the NWS unit were the stiff joint and poor gripping performance. The NWS performed better than expected in the cutting test, as well as having the best grips out of the three in my opinion. In first place with a score of 9.55 is the Knipex. This really isn't that big of a shock considering Knipex have been making pliers for so long and everyone else is playing catch up. The only issue I saw with the Knipex is that it has an inferior handle design to the NWS and was slightly more expensive than the NWS. The Knipex had the best joint design, build quality, and gripping performance out of all the three. It was on par with the NWS during the, the cutting test. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the showdown of three German brand 7 inch combination pliers, check out the link in the description to the full review. Also take a look at the videos done by Garnet Tools on the Ghidor power pliers and a similar NWS plier set. Also in the description are the KC Tool and Amazon product links to all of these products where applicable. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time.